so that's 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 basically all of the uh, language stuff. We covered everything about the Go language. Uh, like uh, the rest of the stuff has to do with tool sets and some other things. Um, there are two other things we could talk about today, which are JSON and time. We kind of already talked about time, but there's some more stuff we can talk about. Okay. So. Let's do time first because it's easy. So in, uh, in Go, time, there's a time library. And it has a bunch of stuff in it that's uh, helpful. In fact, time provides functionality for measuring and displaying time. The cylindrical calculations, always assume we're going to go Say that 10 times twice. Cylindrical. Uh, so a duration. So let's talk about a duration. A duration is a duration of time. Okay. So this idea, there's a moment of time, like a date, like today. But there's also duration, right? Like five seconds. So we represent five seconds with a duration. Okay? And so there are these constants inside of the time package that are durations. There's nanosecond, microsecond, millisecond, second, and then out. So with functions that take a duration, they'll take a time dot duration, we have to pass in one of these. So typically what you'll see, and you've seen me write it, is if I want to say sleep, sleep is a function in the time package. Sleep pauses the current go routine for at least the duration d. A negative or zero duration causes sleep to return immediately. You typically do this, time.sleep 100 milliseconds. So you multiply the duration times some number to get you how long you'd like to sleep. Okay, so that's a very common pattern. Because a time dot duration is not the same as an integer. They're different. Okay? So if you want to convert it into an integer, you have to use a cap. So if we see this example, 100 milliseconds. Well, doesn't, we need to add a print. Because <laughs> otherwise it doesn't do anything. And run that. Um, right. Uh, it did something. Well, that's not enough time. So this is a problem. Uh, there we go. It took a second. Uh, one neat thing about the uh, playground is they implemented some of the time steps so you can sleep, which is cool. Um, it like goes a set time out of JavaScript. Uh, so that's how we can sleep. Notice millisecond times a thousand. So this is the same as one times a time dot second. Um, so this just kind of reads nice, but the idea is this is a time duration. Sleep takes a duration, so we multiply the number times the duration. Okay. And you can do addition and stuff too. Um, but given the way the time is defined, the duration is defined, you can see that it can be very exact. It represents the elapsed time between two instants as an in 64 nanosecond count. So you can get down to the nanoseconds if you need to. So uh, like some, some programming languages have a sleep that takes like milliseconds or a second, and goes takes a nanosecond. So you can sleep for one nanosecond. Um, so there's no definition units for day or larger to avoid confusion across daylight saving time transitions, because the definition of a day is not constant. Um, to count the number of units and the duration divide, and so it tells you how to do some stuff. Uh, look here for examples, and there's some good stuff. Okay. But the idea is they use these durations. The other thing we commonly use is a time dot time. So let's go look at that guy. Everybody understand duration? It's pretty, pretty much the common sense idea of duration. OK, time represents an instant in time with nanosecond precision. So this is how we interact with dates and stuff in Go. It's with a time dot time. Um, they have a bunch of methods, but this is how you can create one. You can say uh, month, date, and give it year, month, day, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, and its location. And that would return you the time. If we go look at location, uh, we can uh, get the location this way. So it reads it from your operating system, which is kind of interesting. So if I gave it America slash new underscore York, I would get the uh, time zone of New York, right? Because time. An instance in time, like what time it is, is relative to where you are, right? 
because it's uh, 4, 412 here, it's uh, 512 Mountain Time, 612 Central Time, and 712 Eastern Time. So times are, are relative. Everybody, everybody get that idea? Like it's a pretty basic idea, right? Uh, what time it is is not constant, right? It's not uh, the same everywhere. So that's, that's why this date thing takes the uh, current location so that you can get that. Um, so if we had a distributed application, if it's in New York, it'll show New York time, California, California time. Right? Yeah, welcome to the wonderful world of web development. Uh, that is a real fun problem to have to deal with is the various time zones. Typically what we do is store all the times in UTC time. So it's Greenwich Mean Time, whatever. That's kind of what we tend to do. And uh, they, they tell you some of the ways to do that. But usually we don't use this date function. What we do instead is we use parse. So let me go to parse. Um, so parse. Here we go. Layout string. So Go has a really unusual way of parsing dates. Um, you give it this layout, this uh, layout format, and then you give it the value. And so the value would typically be a string like that looks like this. And you give it the format and it gives you back a time. Because uh, we're either, normally the way we work with this is we either do something like dot now to get the current time, or we have a time in a file somewhere, and we parse it using the parse. Pretty rare that we have like a specific time in mind, okay? Uh, the other thing we often do is like get five hours ago, so we'll say dot now, and then subtract five hours from now. Uh, but we don't usually create a time directly. Uh, so we usually use parse. And so I'll show you an example of parsing. Um, just so we can see it. So let's do new folder time example and new file. Package. Okay. So let's just print the current time. Okay. I'm just timed on it. That's how you get the current time. Oops. Didn't I call it time example? Where am I? You have to use the location one to figure out where you are. Uh, there I go. Okay. So printing out the current time, you can see that if you run this again, it's going to keep changing the time. Right? Because time is always moving. Never stand still. So uh, this gets it from your operating system. This isn't like a Go thing. Uh, and so we can parse times, though. So suppose I have a time in mind. Let's say 2012-01. Okay, I want to parse that. But this doesn't have like a time part. It just has the date part. So how do I parse that? So you can use time.parse. And then we need a layout. So that's, that's going to be uh, our time as string. So say we got this from a file or something. And we want to parse it. So we need our format. That's the first thing it takes. So if we go look at the docs here. Uh, parse the format string turns time in the ref sense. The layout defines the format by showing how the reference time defined to be would be interpreted. So this is why Go is unusual. The format is itself a time that looks like the way you want it to look, okay? So they have all these pre-canned formats. These are, once again, constants. And uh, they basically define formats that are generally used on the web and stuff. Um, this one gets close to what we want, right? Because I have year, month, date. But I don't need all the time stuff. So what you can do is when you have a custom format, one that doesn't fit into these buckets, uh, you can just copy this bit and we'll paste that into our code. Whoops. And that will parse it as, so, so here's the, the thing I want, and here's the format it's in. So the format is itself looks like a date. Okay. And so the way this works is that it sees 2006, and it says that must be the year. And it sees 01, it's like that must be the month, and 02 must be the day. Okay, 02 always means the day. Okay. That's probably thoroughly confusing. So let's print that. And we'll 
get rid of this. Okay, so it converted it into a time. Notice it added all the other stuff too. So now it has hours, minutes, seconds. It adds an offset, it defaults to UTC. So that's how we can get a time. If I change the time, right, now it's the second of January. Let's say I change the format, right? I mean, this is, this is America. We use a bizarre format, right? We use day, month, year. No, we use month, day, year. So what's today? The 10th? 2015? So the way you would do that is you'd say 02 slash 01 slash 2006, because that's the format. Those are described here in detail. Oh, one's one's always a month, oh, two is always a uh, day. day. I didn't understand that first. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I just typed it in wrong. Okay, so that's how you parse, string, uh, parse strings into times, right? Is, is by doing it this way, with parse. You can do the reverse, of course. You can format. Uh, and the way you do that, so I, I'll take this out as a variable. Time as time, and then we'll print that. But I want to give it a custom format. I don't want to use that format it gave me. So what you can do is you can say time dot or sorry, time as time dot format, and it gets the same uh, format, the same layout format. So if I wanted to get it back into the original format, I would give it this. Okay. Um, it can return an error. We're just going to ignore the error. You know, if you had a time that wasn't in the right format, it would return that as an error, just like we saw with parse int and parse float. Okay, so I got it back out again. Um, I could, you know, use a different format. So there's a bunch in there, like I said. So let's do time.kitchen. Kitchen time. And that's what it does, which isn't helpful because it doesn't have a date. But that's this kitchen. Uh, but, you know, we could do one of these others. Um, I like that kitchen. Let's do Unix date. It's kind of got an interesting format. You guys there you go. Friday, July 10th, 2015. Okay. Notice it at UTC. That's not quite right, is it? Uh, so there is a. It, we're not in UTC time. Uh, so that that's not right. So there's a parsing location, and you give the location. So they give you an example. Right. So you have two options. You can use parsing location, or you can include this kind of thing. Something that indicates the time zone. Like PST. Or exactly. Uh, so the amount of break from Greenwich or whatever the heck that is to. Uh, that's right. So you would either include like this or this, but that would have to be part of your format and you have to put it in front of the string. So is that thoroughly confusing? It, believe me, it is, and there's just no way to make it not confusing because time zones are just crazy confusing. So, you spend a lot of time thinking, wait, is it plus one hour or minus one hour? Is it, you know, you don't just drive yourself crazy with it, but that's just the way it is. So, um, <laughs> the example program, and this will be what we finish with, I guess. Uh, we don't need to do this, do we? Do you guys know how to do the sleep? Yeah. I think we know how to do sleep for 10 seconds and print hello world. If you don't, feel free to do that one. Uh, we want to create a program which can find the number of days between two dates. Okay? Cool? Cool. Cool.